Ewing's molecular theory. The idea that magnetism of a substance originates in the microscopic constituent of the matter was first proposed by Weber in 1852 and was later developed by Ewing in 1890. According to Ewing, the microscopic constituent is a molecule. Every molecule of a magnetic substance behaves as a tiny elementary magnet called molecular magnet. Therefore, Ewing's theory is called molecular theory of magnetism. A test tube containing iron filings in unmagnetized state is likely an ordinary iron bar. The filings are equivalent to the molecules of a magnetic substance. In an unmagnetized state, the molecular magnets in an iron bar are randomly distributed with their N and S poles pointing in all possible directions. When the iron bar is magnetized with the help of a magnet, the molecular magnets arrange themselves in an orderly way. The order is due to the pointing of all N poles of the individual molecules in one direction and all the S poles in the opposite direction. This state of magnetization is shown. Inside the magnetized iron bar, the N pole of each elementary magnet is coupled to the S pole of the next magnet, and so on. However, there are free N poles at one end and free S poles at the other end. These free poles make the iron bar as a whole magnet with two N S poles. These two poles are the points where N and S poles of the molecular magnets are left to be free or uncoupled. In general, perfect ordering of all elementary magnets is not easy to achieve. Only repetition of the process of magnetization allows the maximum alignment among the molecular magnets. This means that the magnetization of the iron bar cannot be increased further. This limit of magnetization of a substance is called magnetic saturation. In certain substances like steel, the alignment of molecular magnets produced during the magnetization remains permanent. Therefore, steel is used to make permanent magnets. But in some substances, like soft iron, the alignment is disturbed easily. Therefore, soft iron is used to make electromagnets. When the magnetized iron bar is cut into a number of smaller and smaller pieces, each piece continues to act as a magnet. By extension of the logic, this means that the smallest possible piece of a molecule is also a magnet. Magnetic poles always exist in pairs. Two poles have equal strength. Since any magnet consists of two N and S poles, a magnet is also called a magnetic dipole. Magnetism of a magnet can be destroyed by tapping, hammering, heating, etc.